Hey everybody, this is Dale with Networking Step by Step. And in today's video cheat sheet, we're going to be configuring OSPF MD5 authentication on the interface. Let's look at what we've done so far. We've enabled OSPF throughout the network. We've hard-coded all the router IDs. We've manipulated the OSPF cost on certain interfaces. We've changed the default reference bandwidth from 100 meg to 10 gig. We've manipulated the default hello timers to be able to implement fast hellos and we've changed the network type on certain interfaces. So let's see what it is we're going to do. We're going to be configuring OSPF MD5 authentication on the interfaces between router 2 and 3 here in OSPF area 0. And basically the way you do that is underneath the interface you type in IP OSPF authentication message digest. That's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and get started here. I like to copy and paste my commands in so that you guys don't sit there and watch me fumble around. So I just pasted in the command show IP OSPF interface E01 which is the interface on router 2 between router 2 and 3. And as you can see there's a lot of really good information here but the information we are looking for is not there. We're looking to see if authentication has already been enabled and that's not here because it should be right below the suppress hello for neighbors output. So let's go ahead and configure router 2 for OSPF MD5 authentication. And what we should see here is that we should see the adjacency go down between router 2 and 3. And that's exactly what just happened. We had an adjacency state change. This process 2 is router 2 and it went down to neighbor 3. The neighbor went down. And that's because on router 2 we have enabled OSPF MD5 authentication, which once again, right here below the suppress hello for neighbors, there is the output that we're looking for. Authentication has been enabled, and it's using the default key ID of zero. So let's go ahead and go on over to router three. And once again, there it shows that the neighbor has gone down there on router three as well. And once again, right here below the suppress hello for neighbors, we do not have the output that we did on router 2 where it has been enabled. So let's remedy that. And as you can tell already, router 3 has said that it has come up and we are loading to full to router 2. And just like on router 2, on router 3 now has it enabled, message digest enabled, using a default key ID of 0. Now, we've gone through the trouble of implementing OSPF MD5 authentication. Why use a default key of 0? Let's use our own key. And the key is used for hashing the password. And so you don't want to use a default key. You want to use a key of your own, and you can use a key uh, between 0 and 255. So let's go to each router and put in the message digest key that we would like to use. In this case I'm using 7. And I also like to put them in at the exact same time. Uh, sometimes you gotta hold your mouth just right uh, when you do OSPF MD5 authentication. So on both sides we've put that in. Once again they have to match on both sides. Uh, before the default was zero on both sides and now um, we're uh, making it seven so they have to match on both sides. So now as you can tell not only do we have message authentication enabled but the key is seven for router three. Oh, I grabbed the wrong thing. And it's enabled. Message Digest is enabled on router 3 with a key of 7. And we have an adjacency. So that is how you configure OSPF MD5 authentication on the interface. As always, these videos are fast and hard hitting and uh, shows you what it is you need to see so that you can be able to implement these technologies on your network and still have time to do your hobbies or spend with your family. Good luck to you.